Hi everyone, welcome to Hunter Gatherer Cooking. I'm doing another staycation over in Pembroke in Wales this time. And the plan is to show you lots and lots of fishy goodness. Now the story behind this one is that I was contacted about some smoked salmon and me being me, I can't ever just say thank you. I've got to go and see them. So I booked some time off. I'm going to be staying in quite a nice hotel by the looks of the pictures. And hopefully I'm in some nice food and showing you guys my little adventure. So I hope you enjoy this. Make sure you uh, hit that subscribe button because that really helps me and enjoy the show. So when you gotta go, you gotta go. They all laughed at Christopher Columbus. If I let you go. Ah! My God, we're going off piece now. So I've just had a call from Tracy from the Smoke Shed Wales and I'm a bit late, but apparently we're gonna go straight to uh, an award winning food market as soon as we get there so I've got to put my foot down safely and uh, get there ASAP. I see the sea! We're nearly there! I think I just saw a sign for Asgard. Four, I'm coming! Oh no wait, it was for Fishguard. Close. Here we are. So there's the hotel and there is the smoke shed and there's Tracy. So we're gonna go straight to the market now. Tracy from the Smoke Shed Wales and we smoke traditional hand reared smoked salmon here in Pembrokeshire and we've invited Alex here today to come and have a look at the processes and see how it's all done. We get our salmon from Westeros up in Scotland, um, UK, sustainably sourced. They swim in tidal pools against a current, they're very well looked after. It's well worth having a look at Westeros themselves to see how they look after their fish and why we chose them as a supplier. We smoke on a weekly basis and they are limited batches, limited by nature, obviously. And we will be showing Alex the process of when it arrives and how we cure it today, followed by removing the cure, washing it, how we look after the fish and preparing it for the smoker. Everything is available online, so you can have a look at our link and Alex, I'm sure, will put it in and you can order online or you can even come to Llys Mevig in Newport, Pembrokeshire where we sell it in reception and there's a long process involved, hence Alex coming today to have a look how it's done. This is where it all happens, all behind here. This is where we started preparing this morning and where we prepare the cure. We've got our secret mix of a high molasses content, content sugar and salt and we mix those together at our unique ratio which we believe that's been tried and tested over a period of 10 years when Ed started the business. This is one box from Westeros and this is how we receive it. So here we have the salmon that's been delivered today. We have eight filleted, scaled. Handle it very carefully because we don't want it to get bruised at any point in the process. It's not too fat here. If it was quite sort of raised in fact, we'd know that it was a bit of a lazy fish and hadn't been swimming against the tide as well. So it's quite a good lean decent looking fish. We've got three equidistance to uh, holes into the back of the fish, skin side, so that we can put it down, skin side down, onto the cure to be soaked up to, so this cure actually penetrates the flesh. This is the mix of molasses, sugar and salt, which gives its color and flavor. I'll put a fine layer on the bottom of each tray by hand, everything. Aim to put two to three sides in here, probably two. Place it without the sides touching anywhere. Make sure it hasn't curled under itself in any way. And there we go. Then we'll put another one in here, which I'll just prepare another one. Topping and tailing them, and then we'll top off with cure. And you can see already that it's starting to take some of the moisture content out of the fish. I need to finish the other 
16 sides that are in that particular box and then I'll be stacking them up onto the tray and putting them into the fridge and they'll stay in there for 10 to 14 hours so overnight and tomorrow we'll be in we'll be washing them off I had an amazing afternoon with Tracy she showed me around and uh, there's going to be a separate video for um, how she makes and prepares all that amazing smoked salmon. So look out for that one. But I'm up in the bedroom now and I was just so impressed with the hotel, literally right from the outside. It looked amazing. So just coming through, beautiful vines everywhere. Just coming into the hotel, reception was really tidy. There was a nice little room to the right where you can kind of work. And then coming upstairs again, just really, really nice. I love the fact that the room numbers are just written on the door. So coming into the room, I didn't know what to expect, but again, really, really impressed. Open the door, massive, massive double bed, um, sofa, beautiful window. I love the fact that the windows were open as well. Just loads of air in here. And then into the bathroom, again, so impressed, so clean, so spacious, really shiny. It's a really, really top-notch place. I'm gonna head down to dinner now and check out the food in the restaurant. have gone for the salmon for a starter i mean why not and smoked just over there cheers mm. Mm. so this whole trip started from tracy giving me a call and saying do you want to try the salmon so me being me pretty much arranged a date came over in the car now it transpires but the salmon that she's using is from a place uh, called Westeros up in Scotland. And me being me, again, have arranged to go and see the Westeros salmon. Um, and it's actually an offshore salmon farm. So it's not an onshore one, they live in the sea. So it's the best condition uh, for the salmon that it possibly could be. There's a lot of stigma and stereotypes around farmed salmon. So I'm keen to find out more about it. Just look at this place. Just look at this food. So I've gone classic meat and two veg. So I've got a lamb dish here, and there's my two veg, the potatoes, and this amazing cauliflower here. So I'm gonna tuck in. The food is spectacular, absolutely spectacular. You have to come here, it's just so good. I feel like I'm abroad. You could like be in Spain or France or, I don't know, it just feels different, it's so nice. Just look at that. It smells amazing. That lime zest is incredible. Fuck me. Oh my God. That might be the best dessert I've ever had. I'm in bed now. Bed feels pretty damn comfortable. Pillows are insane. I'm gonna turn the lights out now and I will see you in the morning. So I've woken up, had a shower. Obligatory shower scene. That slept really well. The bed was absolutely amazing. It's time to head down to breakfast and then I'm going to meet up with Tracy again. Just look at this day. Look at it. So following on from yesterday, I'm now going to show Alex the second process whereby we wash off the cure from the salmon. Cured salmon and you can see the difference from yesterday. We usually allow it 12 to 14, 15, 16. Um, 12 to 14 minimum, but 15 hours is a really good time for it to take on its flavour. Checking for any scales that have escaped, <laughs> that, that I may have missed, um, any pin bones, sometimes, you know, natural product, sometimes some are left in there. There we go, you can see this. And if I turn it over, you can see where it's taken up through the gaps and skin at the back. And very gently, you just turn it over, and wash away any of the thing. That is visibly firmer. That is a lot firmer. You can feel that, so where the moisture content has been taken out, you can feel it's a lot firmer and it's taken on a beautiful colouring all the way through. The pellicle is formed over the top 
Uh, this goes in the cooling fridge overnight and will be smoked tomorrow evening. Now it's time to go on a bike ride with Max. That's going to be another separate video, so look out for that one. But there's loads to do and see here, so um, definitely worth checking out. Hi, it's Max at Hidden Roots down in Newport, Pembrokeshire. We, uh, we do mountain bike guiding around the Pacelli's or from the Smethwick Hotel. So you can come and have a stay, some food, some beers, and then uh, the next day if you're feeling a bit like you need some fresh air, we'll take you out for a mountain bike ride all along the Pembrokeshire coast, the mountains, and all the scenery. So um, yeah, we've got a fleet of uh, enduro bikes that are all electrically assisted. Um, the enduro bikes can pretty much go anywhere, fully capable. We've got a 170 mm travel front and rear, and uh, yeah, 12 gears, so all of that with a battery, you can uh, pretty much achieve anything in the area. And it doesn't matter how, how much fitness you've done or uh, when you last cycled, these literally do everything for you, and then you can enjoy the descent. Today we've got Alex with us, and we're gonna take him out for a bike ride from the hotel, and we're just gonna head up the mountain behind you guys. That was awesome. So I've just got back from cycling with Max. That was absolutely brilliant. If you're in the area, definitely worth looking them up. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Drop me any comments or questions. Uh, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna have a shower and get clean. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Ed. I invited Alex to this part of the world to give him an experience of what we have to offer. Where we're actually sitting right now, you can see uh, we have a mountain over there called Carningley, Mountain of the Angels. And every bit of uh, landscape, geography has something to, to offer us. So we've kind of invested our time in discovering what, what, what's available on the landscape. Obviously you have the animals that graze the land and those types of areas they're doing wild grazing and we're interested in obviously the animals that graze but also what they're grazing and the things they graze become part of our menu. My real interest right now is discovering more around the vegetables, sea vegetables and um, we've got a few here actually. This is rock samphire. This is above the tide line um, when, when you're above the tide line, in a, in a way it's a bit safer because you, you're not quite sure what is going on in the waterway. You know, up, upstream, there's farmers and different farmers have different techniques. Having said that, where we're sitting right now, I'm, I'm confident that we can eat the shellfish. I mean, out here we have um, razor clams and how we know that, you, you see the shells. And how we harvest those, we go on a very low tide. Uh, and they, they present these little keyways. I know if I put some salt down there, they'll either spit on me or eventually they'll show their heads. And unfortunately for them, that's, um, that'll end up in my bucket and eventually end up on my kitchen table. This thing here is sea beet. Really lovely vegetable, very versatile, similar to spinach, but it's got more fiber attached to it so it doesn't shrink less water in it. On the way down we went, went on a little walk with with Alex and he's um, and I've been showing him what we can eat from our hedgerow and elderflower is a really lovely plant tree. Um, from it we get the flower head and also the berries. The berries are very good for the birds. It builds their immune system so we kind of leave you know with responsible picking you're trying to harmonize with with nature with your landscape. These flower heads here, petals, part of, uh, they come from Rosa rugosa, which is a rose hip. Um, from, from this plant here, we'll, we can get, make a, a syrup, and from the syrup we can make Turkish delight, which is a delight. My background or my upbringing was, I, I was um, brought up on a dairy farm, 
and the, the farm that I was bought on up on had to make money so its sustainability came from making a margin. My, my train of thought is different to that I'm not money is obviously or the finance side has to be has to be there to, to you know make sure you, you, you can live but it's not it's not the, the real crux of why why we're doing what we do. We want our guests to feel connected to, to the environment they come into. So in terms of what we produce and deliver, it's really important for them to taste it and feel it and smell it. And it really connects them to this part of the world. But I'm having dinner with Ed tonight. He's not asleep, he's just looking at his phone, but we're gonna chew the fat and uh, have, a, have a great evening. So last night got a little bit loose. Um, we had a fantastic dinner. I had the leek and I had the hake and it really was so good. The chefs here are just on point. And then uh, me and Ed chewed the fat, drank some wine. And uh, that went on to about half past one. We ended up walking down to the river. He showed me a Neolithic stone. That is not a euphemism. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. So I woke up a little bit, a little bit groggy today. So I'm going to go down for breakfast and find out what the plan is. So we're actually going to do some wine tasting today at midday. And then Ed is going to try and hook me up uh, with something seaweed related. So watch this space. But I um, hope you're enjoying the video. Hit the subscribe. Well, I'm Dave. This is Feral Pig Wines. Um, we are a wine shop primarily. We're all online, we're doing deliveries, we're doing tastings every night, every week. Um, we're doing wine spider glass. Uh, all the wines you can see behind me, um, all hand-picked, all kind of natural, organic. Every wine's got a little story to it. Um, and this is a little project, I think, that was born in the cellar bar at like one in the morning on New Year's Eve. I guess I kind of rediscovered what I love about it down here. And then that's a theme that kind of runs throughout the whole place. Um, it's just that passion, I guess. I mean, you kind of rediscover why you do things that you do. And that's why I've come back and set up this shop. We've got pretty much everything. We've got the classic French, uh, Burgundies, Bordeaux, all the great little Loire stuff. But then we're off to like kind of Spain and Portugal. I mean, you know, funky skin contact, macerated Albarinos, wines from Tenerife, uh, great little selection of up and coming Welsh wines, fun little Australian pet nat over here. I mean, Austria, Germany, uh, Slovenian orange wine, really top quality Australian Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, fortified wines. I mean, it's, it's meant to be a selection that kind of is interesting. And it covers all the bases. You've got your classics, you've got your new interesting stuff. So, and the whole point is these wines have a little character and individual story to them, really. Do you want a glass of wine, Tracy? Hey, I'm, uh, I'm John, uh, head chef at the Really Wild Emporium in St. David's. Welcome to the restaurant. Uh, we're open uh, in the evenings for a uh, seven course tasting menu. Uh, and each course has got uh, something from the wild in it that we've gathered, uh, foraged, picked ourselves, be that uh, something from the sea, uh, seaweeds, seaweeds is really our thing, something from the hedgerows, green, green leaves, uh, something from the woodlands, uh, berries, flowers, fruits. Been a chef since I was about 21. I started off at Klismavik. So always, always been super passionate about food, uh, cooking, uh, not necessarily foraging to begin with, so, so yeah, did a little stint at university uh, down in Exeter, studying engineering. Uh, finished pretty quickly. Just um, wanted a job where I was, I was, I was on my feet, uh, getting stuck in, um, and that's where I found Hughes Medic uh, and Ed, who really, really got the foraging um, out of me. Uh, from there, uh, a little stint in the White Brook restaurant in uh, in the White Valley. Uh, from there up to um, Long Clum, a uh, restaurant that's now got three Michelin stars up in the Lake District. Fantastic time there, really eye-opening. Then down to Menu Gordon Jones in Bath. Yeah, before landing here and then taking, taking, uh, taking charge about a year and a half ago. Our, our ethos is 
so uh, foraging is so so it is so it's such a big part of it is picking picking whatever you're going to pick when it's at its absolute best. Some of the highlights tonight: uh, wild duck uh, with um, wild garlic. Uh, black truffle cheese. One thing that's been going down really well recently is the palate cleanser of uh, elderflower jelly. Elderflower is doing really nicely at the moment uh, with a sorrel granita. Lovely little clean palate cleanser. Thanks very much Alex for, uh, for coming over uh, and uh, yeah I hope to, hope to see you guys soon. So it was back in the car and then time to visit a seaweed farm. Now these guys at Caramore are doing a fantastic job and they're turning it into fertiliser at the moment. But seaweed is so versatile I want to do a new video on that just alone. And after that Ed then took me to one of his really special places which was one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. way down was hard but on the way back up that was even harder. I can't really explain what happened next but we ended up in this absolute out of nowhere pub and I met the best people in the world. <laughs> this, so, hang on, so just to describe, we, we've come, where are we? In uh, Pembrokeshire, well, yeah, but, where we all hunt. Well we're in the arse end of nowhere and, and yeah, the but Hakula is the best clothing in the world. <laughs> At the Dufferin Arms, which is North also called Bessie's. Yes. Anyway, let's take a picture. <laughs> Here we are at the smoke shed, and this is my chamber room. And in my chamber room, this is where a little bit of magic happens. Uh, I have choice when I smoke, and that's the flavour profile that we put onto our whatever we're smoking. We're actually smoking salmon right now. Fundamentally, the smoke that we all recognise is oak. It's got the base layer of fundamental flavour that you need. So here we go. We have chip and we have dust and we use a combination of chip and dust. Equal quantities for me, the, the chip will, will keep the burn in and the dust will flatten the fire out. So what we're after is a, a, rolling, a rolling burn. Down here we have, this is a, a very basic thing. We have a sawdust burner. Here you get the salmon. So this is the chamber, it's very, you know, it's a super basic thing. All we have is a, a sawdust burner behind this chamber. We lay them flat, some smokeries, they, they hang them. Person, my, you know, everything is personal. We all have choices in how we do stuff. For me, I, I'd much rather the fish to be, to be flat. So all, all these processes that we do are very, very simple, but each one has to be done properly. Otherwise the end product is not right. Here we go, done. The salmon are ready for smoking. Once I'm satisfied the burn is right, I'll leave it overnight and this is going to be an overnight burn. It'll be going for over 12 hours, probably more like 14 hours. So we're going to set that up, leave it going and I'll come back in 10 minutes to see how it's going. But what I'm trying to do is just get a slow burn. It's the last day of the process now. I'm gonna meet Tracy, get the salmon out of the, uh, the smoker and get them in the fridge to cool down, get it wrapped up and then it's home time. And there we go. The fish here has got a lovely color to it. 
you can see where the nature of the molasses content in the cure has given a really nice coloration on the fish and it's really taken on the cure and the firmness and texture of the fish after it's been smoked and cured and gone through the whole process is, is well, it's a really nice piece of side of salmon here. the end I cannot believe it I'm packed up um, it's been emotional I've been here only four days technically but the people that I've met have been just incredible um, Ed has sculpted a, a, a sanctuary of people that truly care about what they're doing and it shows in everything that they do um, they're responsible for their own day and their own work and they provide the best service to the customers the room has been fantastic the food has been unbelievable Massive thank you to Ed for helping me put this together. Huge thanks to Tracy as well. The entire family, the entire team, it's been incredible. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I hope that it gets seen by lots of people so you can sort of see some of the experiences that I've seen over the last four days. But all the descriptions, all the business links, they'll all be in the, um, in the description box. Have a little look, maybe make a booking. Um, if you do come here and you see this, mention me. Um, I'm definitely going to be coming back, so I'll see you soon for the next video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, really important.